Hello and welcome back to the cockpit of the FA-18 Hornet. Um, for a while now, I've been looking for a more comprehensive training mission set campaign, whatever it is that you're trying to find that will help take you from, I don't know anything about this plane to, hey, I can kind of sort of operate this effectively in a combat situation. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find anything like that. Maybe something exists and I just haven't come across it yet. But what I really want is a full kind of flight school campaign that will take you mission by mission, topic by topic on how to operate the F-A-18 in a more realistic setting than just kind of plopping you into the air and go bomb this target and then the mission's over. So I want, I, I'm, I'm trying to put together something that's a little bit more comprehensive and more like you would do in real life if you were going to fly. You start in a plane, you take off from an airport, you head to a target, you practice whatever mission that you're doing, and then you fly back, you do a landing, whether at an airfield or on a carrier or whatever. So that's kind of my thought process behind putting these missions together. I am learning how to use the mission editor to do it. This is the first mission that I've created, but it would be the second mission in the uh, flight school campaign. Uh, the first one would be a cold start tutorial, but I need to learn how to um, interact with cockpit items and have certain things hap have basically have voice triggers act or active activate once certain things are done. So until I learn how to do that, I'm not ready to jump into that particular tutorial just yet. But this one here is basically just a relocation after you after you complete that mission one cold start. Uh, you're going to be moving from, uh, I think, Kubliati, yeah, Kubli Kobaletti to Vaziani. And it's all based on area triggers. Once you enter the thing, it's going to tell you to do something and you have to do it. Um, so we're gonna. I'm gonna take you through it just now. I will. I will time compress through some of the longer wait times between waypoints, but I'll try to make sure that all of the all of the instructions are included, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Provide some feedback. That's kind of the primary purpose of all of this, of uh, sharing this with you. Is trying to design this all on my own and hope that I catch everything is pretty is a pretty ridiculous expectation. So I'm going to try to post these post the missions video versions of the missions once I finish them so I can get some feedback from you guys on what you think should change or if I could do something better or you know whatever. Uh, so please feel free to leave uh, feedback in the comments. I would like to make this as good of a product as possible so that hopefully by the time we're done People can download this and actually practice the things you see in the video to video tutorials that are all over YouTube. So let's go ahead and jump into this. I've been rambling long enough. Now that we have the aircraft prepped and ready to go, we need to do a quick relocation hop over to Vaziani, which will serve as our training base for your familiarization with the Hornet. Using your preferred DDI, press the menu push button until you're on the SUPT page, then press the HSI push button. On the right side, press the WIPT push button to activate waypoint navigation, press the up arrow push button to set waypoint 1, then press the SEQ1 push button to activate the flight plan. On the UFC, press the COM1 button to select it, then enter 133.000 and press ENT. Then use the COM1 keybind to activate the COM menu and request taxi to the runway. Once the tower provides clearance, slowly add throttle to get the aircraft moving and make a left turn onto the taxiway by using rudder controls. If the aircraft isn't turning fast enough, you can either reduce speed, or hold down the nose while steering keybind to increase your turn rate on the ground. Hmm, that's weird. The f Every other time I've gone through this, it had the... We, we, we already passed this point, we were just ready to request taxi Quality. to the runway. One, one. Request startup. That's the first time that showed up, and of course it does it right on a YouTube video. <laughs> huh. Why is this... Couple ready. In field. One, one. Request startup. Okay, there's some kind of weird thing going on. 
Well, hopefully I can figure out what that is at some point, but the ATC doesn't really matter right now. Whatever. That's, literally, that's the first time that that's happened, so I'm not sure what changed to cause the ATC to become confused. Take your time while moving down the taxiway. Make small throttle adjustments to keep your aircraft moving, while also making left and right rudder adjustments to keep your aircraft centered on the taxiway centerline. So, for those of you who are curious about the the voice part of that, I basically made a PDF, dragged the PDF, I made a PDF script, dragged the PDF into the Microsoft Edge browser, and then used one of the read aloud voices and Audacity to record the read aloud of the script. Did a little bit of post-processing in Audacity to make it sound better. I, I don't think, I just normalized it. I did some normalization to make the volume reasonable and saved it as a file. So pretty easy to type out the scripts and then do some voice and get a nice, a decent, a decent quality voice. I know it's not a real, a real voice, but it's better than my voice. So, You're approaching yeah. <laughs> the entrance to the active runway. Start slowing down using the brakes and follow the taxiway centerline as it curves toward the runway using the rudder controls. Bring the aircraft to a stop just before the runway threshold, marked by the horizontal white line. Come to a stop here. Double check that you've activated waypoint navigation on your HSI, that SEQ1 is activated, and that you've selected waypoint 1 as your active waypoint. Then access the communications menu and select request takeoff. Once the tower clears you for takeoff, look left and right down the runway to ensure that no aircraft are on the runway, as well as not on a final approach for landing. Then pull out onto the runway. Turn to the right and try to place yourself right on the runway numbers, 07 in this case. Okay, uh, I don't have my head tracking uh, turned on for this one because it's not really necessary. I've set this up so that... I've set this... Can we set uh, I've tried to set this up so that it's mostly autopilot. We're ready for takeoff. Activate the brakes to hold the aircraft in position while advancing the throttle to full mill power. Once the aircraft's engines overcome the brakes and it begins moving forward, release the brakes and do your best to use the rudder to keep the aircraft centered on the runway centerline. At 80 knots, disable the nose wheel steering by using the appropriate key bind to reduce oversteering as we increase our speed. Assuming the takeoff trim has been set correctly, the aircraft will pitch up off the ground and begin climbing away from the runway. Once you confirm a positive rate of climb, raise the landing gear and flaps. I'm gonna wait a second. Now that yeah, we're in the air, more. press the auto push button on the HSI. This will couple the navigation information provided by the waypoints to the autopilot so the plane can fly itself. Press the A slash P button on the UFC to display the autopilot menu, then press the CPL push button to activate the autopilot. Verify that waypoint 2 is selected on the HSI. Climb to an altitude of 10,000 feet, then activate the B alt push button to hold the aircraft at desired altitude. Continue flying toward waypoint 2 and await further instruction. Okay, so because this is, this is geared Ideally, people won't be jumping into this campaign, into this training session without any kind of flight experience at all. But I think a lot of people, especially if they're getting jumping into this particular simulator, brand new, don't know anything, this gives them a chance to learn about how waypoint headings work, learn about how to use the autopilot in a way that I don't recall the the in-game tutorial really talking about how to use the autopilot effectively, especially for navigation. So I just wanted to make sure that we included that as part of it. And it also just makes it so that if they just stay on autopilot and allow the plane to fly itself for the most part, it will line them up with the runway so that they can learn about how to land because waypoint two is gonna get us into practicing how to get yourself able to land. So that's that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do some time compression to get us to waypoint two quicker so we don't have to sit through all of that. Um, and then I can't, the clouds are killing me here. Okay, uh, 
uh, I want to get. I want to. I do want to level off at ten thousand feet. So I'm gonna let it keep going, and then we'll level off at ten thousand feet. We'll get the bear alt, the uh, barometric alt altimeter hold there. Can you please? It's the only thing about the autopilot, like you hit the couple mode, and for whatever reason, it still wants to hold your attitude. Can you just let me put my attitude where I want it? All right, so let's go ahead and get ourselves advanced as quickly to waypoint two. And then once we get to waypoint two, it, the, the lesson is gonna start teaching us about getting into landing configuration. That's kind of the whole point of this next part. We're about a third of the way to Vaziani, and it's time to start thinking about how we're going to get this bird safely on the ground. Fortunately, the Hornet includes a feature that makes this incredibly easy. The Hornet is designed to land on aircraft carriers, which requires an extremely robust landing gear due to the fact that the aircraft needs to plant itself onto the carrier deck in order to catch the arresting wire and stop before it plunges off the side into the ocean. Because of this, the standard landing procedure does not require the flare, typical of landing most other aircraft, so the Hornet pretty much just flies straight into the ground to land safely, assuming you have the aircraft at the proper angle and speed. To ensure that the aircraft is at the correct angle and speed, a new indication will appear on the HUD called the E-bracket once the landing gear is lowered. As the name suggests, it's a large E-shaped icon that appears on the left side of the HUD when the aircraft is configured for landing. To get you familiarized with the proper use of the E-bracket, let's disable the B-alt on the autopilot, slow down to less than 250 knots, then drop the landing gear and lower the flaps to full. Do your best to control the aircraft as the surfaces change, holding an altitude of about 10,000 feet and reducing your airspeed to about 130 knots. As the aircraft settles down, begin making small throttle and pitch trim adjustments to keep the speed at about 130 knots and the velocity vector aligned with the horizon indicator on the HUD. Okay, so at this point, we're just trying to get the we're just trying to get the student into the position where they can start figuring out how to use this e bracket because one of the most common questions you see online when it comes to landing on the aircraft carrier is what do I do with this what's I don't understand this e bracket thing so I'm going to give I want to give them plenty of time to start understanding the relationship between the E bracket and the velocity vector, how you're supposed to manipulate all of that. So, you know, I imagine a less experienced, a brand new pilot is gonna struggle to get everything settled out. I wanted to give them plenty of time to kind of get themselves pitched in a way that's gonna allow them to be stabilized so that hopefully by the time they figure that out, they'll reach the, they'll reach the point where we start teaching them about, hey, the velocity vector needs to be inside the E bracket, preferably by the middle, all that, all that good stuff. So uh, let's be a little bit Now that we we're configured for landing, you should see the E bracket on the HUD. The movement of the E bracket is primarily controlled with the throttle, though the actual way it works is a bit more complicated than that. For now, let's just assume that more throttle moves the E bracket up and less throttle moves it down. Start making slight throttle adjustments to move the E-bracket to the horizon indicator on the HUD. All that said, the E-bracket is meant to be used in conjunction with the velocity vector to get your aircraft at the proper angle of attack for a landing. To pair up your velocity vector with the E-bracket, use pitch trim to move the velocity vector up or down until it's within the upper and lower bounds of the bracket. Take your time and make small trim adjustments until the velocity vector is within the E-bracket. Okay, and then the idea is, is that there's, they're supposed to practice. Once the velocity vector is within the E-bracket, no further pitch adjustments should be made using the stick. Ideally, the velocity vector should be aligned as close to the center mark of the E-bracket as possible but as long as it's within the upper and lower bounds everything will be fine. Once you've aligned the velocity vector with the E-bracket, use the throttle to move them up or down to return the aircraft as close to 10,000 feet as possible. 
Continue practicing controlling the pitch of the aircraft in this manner until further instruction. Okay, and then for, I don't know, I think I have like 15 miles in between the trigger for beginning this practice part and the part where it says, okay, we're done. So they're going to sit here for a little while. They're going to sit here for several minutes just practicing, just using the throttle to manipulate where the velocity vector goes. It's, it, it, gets them, it gives them plenty of time to get used to the idea that, oh, yeah, as I'm landing, I'm not doing this to do, I'm not going up and down to do that. I'm just making small throttle adjustments. So that's kind of the thought process behind it. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And it's quite a lot of time, so I'm not going to sit here. We're not going to sit here for all of that. I'm going to give myself a little bit of uh, time compression because it takes a long time to go 15 miles when you're only doing 130 knots. <laughs> it takes quite a long time. So we'll, once the instructions pop up, I'll I'll put us back into real time so that you can listen. Bracket to it. and velocity vector by this point. It's time to get to the airfield, but we're not going to get there very quickly in this configuration. Let's raise the flaps and landing gear and throttle up to around 350 knots. Get back to 10,000 feet of altitude if you're not. Okay, and then they just they reconfigure to the where we were before, get to about 10,000 feet, get up to about 350 knots. That'll give it. That'll give plenty of. I don't want them to go too fast because when they make the, the turn to final, I don't want them to be way off to the left. So I figure. Oh, come on, respond, please. Thank you. My throttle just decided it wasn't going to do anything. Uh, okay, so now we can do some serious time compression to get us close to waypoint three, which is going to turn us onto final to the runway at Vaziani. So if I move through this really fast, and then once we're within a couple of miles, I'll turn it back on and we'll allow it to turn us. So the, the rationale behind using autopilot for most of this is, is I just want to, I want to make sure that they're in a good position to see what a good landing, what a good approach is going to look like, even though we're kind of high for that. I just want to give them a nice... We're pretty close to Vaziani now, and the auto... I want to give them a nice shallow descent towards the runway so that they can have plenty of time to get, get themselves configured for landing, get the velocity vector put into the E-bracket, and then practice putting the E-bracket on the end of the runway. So that's kind of the rationale behind... Pilot should be turning the all aircraft the autopilot to the right to lesson. line up with the runway. Just like we did for the practice, turn off the B-Alt on the autopilot, reduce speed to less than 250 knots, then lower the landing gear and flaps. This time, though, allow the aircraft to begin a slow descent toward the runway. As it begins to settle, adjust speed to about 130 knots and adjust the pitch trim to place the velocity vector within the E-bracket. Once this is done, disable the CPL on the autopilot and make small throttle adjustments to place the E-bracket right at the end of the runway. Use the stick to move the aircraft left or right to align yourself with the runway, but be sure not to make any pitch changes other than with the trim switch. Continue flying in this manner until the aircraft touches down on the runway. Okay, so, like I said, where I've put us makes it so that they have lots and lots of time to get themselves set up for a landing. So we're going to continue allowing this to slow down. I, I wanted to make sure they had plenty of time and a nice long shallow descent towards the runway where they can see the runway. Everything's fine. They're not rushing to try to get everything set up because, you know, it's not intuitive to get all of this put together the first time you go through it, especially if you don't really understand what's going on. So I wanted to give them some time to practice it up in the air where they don't have anything to worry about other than just put the velocity vector vector in the E-bracket. And then now that they understand that, it's a little easier to get it in there the next time. And they have plenty of time to get themselves set up for this. So I'm going to go ahead and time compress this because it's relatively easy to control the whole thing while you're going faster. Okay. So obviously this isn't going to be what they do, but they'll have plenty of time to get down to the ground and get everything all set up 
to have a nice little visual approach to the runway. I, don't, I wanted to make it super simple so that they could get this concept down because the next lesson is going to be working on a pattern. I'm already a good portion of the way through that one. Oh, shit. I'm already a good portion of the way through that one. I just have to figure out some things with the triggers. And we'll be, it'll basically, that one will basically be practicing uh, wave off slash bolter procedures. You take off from the runway, get about a mile away, execute that brake turn to the left again, and then configure yourself for landing that whole thing. So ideally, they'll do a better job of approaching the runway than I did. I'm just, for YouTube, I'm trying to speed this up. But it'll get them so that they'll have plenty of time to line themselves up on the runway, get the e get the angle of attack properly, and just, you know, have a nice, easy little settle down into the runway. So here we go. Land. Touchdown. Use the brakes and speed brakes to slow the aircraft Whoa. down until you can make a safe turn off the runway to fault. one of the taxiway <laughs> entrances to the left. I uh, I accidentally I, I was I was in aircraft carrier mode and I immediately did full throttle. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so we can get the speed brake turned off. Typically, they I would there's enough if they're going slow enough they have they have enough room to uh, slow down to hit that first taxiway, but I have triggers set up on all of the, uh, all everywhere. I could basically just turn off into the grass right now and it would actually end the mission, but theoretically a student isn't gonna do that. They're gonna wait for a taxiway and then come over here and do that. But anyways, that's the mission. Uh, once you turn off the taxiway, no. you're gonna get a nice little, no. let's go to the O Club thing. I mean, we're close enough now. I guess, I guess we can go ahead and just do it. But uh, that's the mission. So I wanna put together more missions like this and they'll all start out this way. They'll, they'll start off being super simple. We'll do the we'll do the basic flight or basic pattern. Basic pat. Can you turn, please? We'll do the basic pattern work, um, so you can see, so that they know how to go around the airfield. Now that we're on the ground, taxi to the nearest parking spot and let's go grab a beer at the O Club. Yeah, I just wanted to put something cool in there. So ideally. You know, I want to I want to have progressively more difficult missions and each new mission is going to assume that you've completed the first one, but you're still most of them are probably going to still get you're still going to have to do those same things. So it encourages you to actually learn how to do those things so that when you go to do the next mission, you're able to get to the lesson of the mission on your own and then you learn something new. That's how the in-game tutorials really should be. But I don't know, they they just they plop you in the middle of the air to teach you a concept and then you're supposed to take that and know how to use it. So eventually I'm hoping to get to the point where, you know, you're building up to actually jumping into somewhat somewhat realistic combat situations where you have to learn how to use situational awareness and things like that, because that's the stuff I'm really struggling with right now. Learning how to use the SA page and the rate RWR and all that stuff. That's uh, that's stuff I've been struggling with ever since I started. So I'm kind of hoping uh, that doing the learn by teaching method is going to help me learn a little bit better. And it will put a hopefully put a resource out into the community that will make everybody's lives easier when they're trying to jump into this module. And if you guys like it enough and you want to help me out, uh, be sure to jump down in my Patreon to uh, help me focus on this. And I would appreciate it very much. And feedback is welcome, all those kinds of things. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I will make another video when I'm done with my pattern work mission, and I will upload that for your review. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you for the next one.